Good morning. Very warm welcome to our Thought for the Week this morning, uh, which sees me sitting out here in the beautiful sunshine in the Garden of the Temporary Mance. Uh, just in case you're wondering, over to this side there are football nets. If you're not quite sure what that is in the background, that's just what it is. And uh, hopefully Peter won't hit me in the face with a football during the, the video, but we'll see how we go. Uh, there is some potential opposition over on the other side too. The sheep in the adjacent field are quite interested in what I'm doing or perhaps quite objectionable to it. I'm not really sure which, but they're making their views heard anyway. Uh, and just before that, actually, somebody drove past uh, with the windows down, singing at the top of their voice. So it's been a very interesting few moments uh, and we'll see how we go from here. All that, of course, is apart from the obvious. The obvious question I dare say you have is, what exactly am I doing dressed in the way that I am? Uh, I've never been anything like a fashion expert and I've no intention of ever becoming one, but neither have I ever recorded Thought for the Week or anything of the sort quite like this before. Uh, and in truth, it's probably confession time. This helmet uh, and this uh, vest or jacket or whatever you want to call it. Uh, well, they've been in my possession, I think, for about 12 years. Uh, and of those 12 years, they've spent all but a few hours uh, away in the darkness somewhere, out of sight, out of mind, completely forgotten about. Uh, it's a wonder in ways that they made it as far as Cumber because they spent all their time in Hilltown with maybe but a few moments exception. Uh, stuffed away in the garage somewhere and they spent I think probably their first six months here in much the same way. In fact when I decided that I was going to go out for a cycle uh, it took me quite a while to find where the gear was even though I'd moved it relatively recently. And maybe you've discovered this too but somebody terribly had managed to shrink my jacket in the intervening year since I last wore it. What used to hang loose, now he clings pretty tight. Well, maybe you've guessed it, I've decided, wisely or otherwise, that for the foreseeable future, weekday mornings, I'm going to try and go out for about half an hour down the Ballydrain Road, back up again Monday through to Friday, and see how I get on at that for at least a wee while anyway. Uh, and the idea, the relatively simple idea, I hope is that I might find that at the, after a while of doing that, that I've got a bit more energy, that I'm just in a little bit better condition and shape, and therefore I've got more energy as I go about home life and chasing Peter when he's kicking footballs at me, uh, and of course as I go about ministry too. Well, we'll see how it goes. It might be that after a brief interlude into the light that the helmet and the jacket are stuffed back in the garage ever to be forgotten about. We'll see how things develop. I don't suppose my cycling idea strikes you as that strange, but it might in a certain light seem like an odd thing to do. Uh, there could be a line of reasoning that says, well look, you're trying to get more energy and yet you're going to go out for half an hour to bike and use up a lot of energy. Is that not a wee bit ham-fisted? Is that not a wee bit the wrong way round? If you're going to try and get more energy for the rest of the day, why get up early and go out the bike? Surely that's using up energy rather than generating it. You can see, I suppose, why somebody might look at it like that. I imagine in our day and age that we probably are well enough familiar with the the way that the body works and the idea of physical fitness and well-being that we we sort of get the idea that if you exercise a bit of energy to make yourself fitter you'll have more energy in the long run uh, you've got to give a bit of it up to have more further down the line uh, which puts me in mind of words from matthew chapter 16 very challenging words and words that are echoed frequently elsewhere in the Gospels. From verse 24 uh, through to verse 27. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, 
But whoever loses their life for me will find it. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? For the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels, and then he will reward each person according to what they have done. Amen. There are certainly challenging words, aren't there, there? Uh, you must deny yourself, take up your cross, follow me. It's so clear that Jesus is calling for wholehearted followers. Uh, he doesn't have any interest, you might say, in having anything less than that. Uh, he's not interested in a kind of half-hearted commitment to him. He considers that really to be an insult, which in truth it is. He calls for people to be wholehearted in their commitment to him and he's utterly unashamed in that just as he's absolutely right in it but he also says something that sounds maybe a little bit paradoxical whoever wants to save their life will lose it whoever loses their life for me will find it you'll only have it if you give it away uh, maybe what I'm trying to do with my cycling in a little way is an illustration of that. I give away some energy and I end up with more energy than I started with. At least that's the theory that I'm pursuing. We'll see if it works out like that. But there certainly are other examples in life where you've, you've got to give something away in order to know the value of it. Uh, if you've ever lodged a check, well, how are you going to know the value of a check? By holding it tight? by keeping it in your pocket, by locking it away securely in a safe. No, well, you're going to know the value of a check when you give it away, when you take it to the bank and you let them take it. And once you've given away the check, well, then you can know its value. So it is with your life. Uh, if you want to have life, life that is true and full and everlasting, then you must give your life to Jesus. Uh, People who selfishly cling to their lives and refuse to submit them to Christ, well, they're trying to keep it, but in the end, they'll lose it. Uh, people who willingly lose their lives, giving their lives continually to Jesus as Lord and Savior, well, they will find it. Of course, Christ himself willingly gave up his life on the cross, and Christ himself gloriously is alive forevermore. Uh, he is in himself the supreme illustration, example, and uh, indication of the truth of his words. And he's the one who calls us to have life in him as we surrender all things to him. Give your life away. Give it away to Jesus, that in him you might have life. Let's pray together. Uh, Lord Jesus, we thank you for your great goodness and love. We thank you for how you call us to give our lives away to you. And we thank you that as we give our lives away, we come to have true life. So grant that we may wholeheartedly love and follow you and know your goodness and care. For your holy sake. Amen. Well, the sheep have behaved very well. There's been no further attempts at karaoke. Uh, and my helmet and vest have seen a little bit more sunlight, as maybe they'll continue to do. It's been really great to have the privilege of your company. Uh, and I hope that those words will stick with you. Jesus says, if you want to save your life, you'll lose it. You lose your life for him. You'll find it. God bless.